What's up, everyone? Hi, guys. For those who are new, I'm Victoria. I'm JC. Here's a Husky squad with us hiking Titus, Yuna, and Kimari. We try to hike almost every single day, unless it's absolutely bucketing, then we can't. But this is the life of living with Huskies. For those of you guys who are new, we've traveled to Europe with the Husky squad for almost a year. And in this video, we'll be talking about why we had to leave Europe. We've been trying to get this video filmed for the past month, but we kept running into issues. From mosquitoes to rain, to having to do some emergency things. And the last time we filmed this video, yeah, we, the audio got completely messed up luck. in the end. So we're not giving up. This is the last time and hope, I mean, this is the fifth time I think, fifth and hopefully time. the last time that we filmed this video for you guys. So the reason, why we went to Europe is because we wanted to see if Europe is going to be home. I was raised there. We've lived in the US since we've known each other. So we figured we want to see if Europe, especially the European Alps, is where we want to live with the Husky squad long term. So that was the reason why we actually traveled to Europe. It wasn't just a little trip. So stick around to this entire video because we'll be talking about something we're planning that you've been asking us for over a year now since we left to Europe. So before we're gonna get into it, why we actually had to leave Europe earlier than we wanted to, let's first talk about the things that we absolutely loved about Europe. Squat is tracking animals here, look at that. There's their strength of their sense sense of smell is incredible. They could smell everything. They kind of warn us when there's- I saw a few chipmunks. Yeah. So, what are the things that we absolutely loved about Europe? If you're planning to go there, visit, if you live nearby, Eastern Europe, at any other places, these are the things that we loved about Europe, especially traveling with dogs. Number one is how dog friendly the outdoors is. I know that a lot of people travel to Europe for the cities and we somewhat did too for a different reason, but the biggest thing for us about going to Europe was the outdoors, right? especially yeah. the Alps. We really wanted to go back to the Alps. Well, I have been there when I was a child and you guys have to go check out if you haven't seen our videos yet in Europe, especially the Alps. I'll leave a, a link in the description of this video to our European playlist. It was out of this world, right? Yeah, there was never a, a sign that said no dogs allowed. Mm -hmm. And we could go everywhere with them. I mean, here in the US, and I know Canada is very open to dogs, but here in the US, national parks are off limits and a lot of different places are off limit to dogs and this is not about knocking a country or anything but the friendliness the dog friendly friendliness in the european alps is just fascinating i mean we went to the most beautiful places in switzerland and in france no problem it was absolutely incredible to be with them everywhere this is what we love to do the most so being able to go everywhere with the squad was amazing so this leads us to the second thing we loved about europe and that's generally how dog friendly Western Europe and even Eastern Europe was right it's it's so different there and this has nothing to do with you know saying one country is better than than the other but it's just how different things are because when dogs are allowed in many places I think this is just my these are just my thoughts that they train their dogs more because if you're allowed to bring your dog to a restaurant or to the mall or to yeah. any place you naturally want to be able to sit down and eat in peace, but um, you can't do that in the US, most places. I mean, some patios allow dogs here too. Titus, you're doing dog things? Yeah, like for example, when we were in, in uh, Zagreb, it's, Croatia. Yeah, Zagreb, Croatia. We were there for a little bit. There was a mall and they were actually inviting dogs to come in. It was, <laughs> it was not a problem at all. Yeah, when we came there with the squad to a restaurant, everyone got super excited to see them. And they were, I think the squad was treated better than we were. <laughs> well, of course. They always do. They always do. It's funny because people don't remember us, but when we come with the squad, everyone remembers us. <laughs> it's happened to us everywhere. And hey, they're, they're really beautiful. I don't blame anyone. But yeah, it's just, you know, being able to go in Switzerland in the trains and in France and in Belgium and you know the dogs being welcome everywhere it was just so nice to do that you know yeah. especially Switzerland I mean to be able to go in the most beautiful trains. parts of the country and take the trains to Zermatt right which was quite busy with tourists 
but uh, it was it was fascinating how dog friendly Europe is and I think it would be cool if other countries were to adapt that at some point and we can sort of share the responsibility that we train our dogs and we take our dogs wherever we can like Home Depot right mm -hmm. like just teaching our dogs to be around these uh, more urban environment so that was really really nice about Europe the third thing we loved about Europe and that's kind of more for the humans but it also makes a big impact for dogs I think and that is food quality again these are things that we experience so if you have a different experience that's your own but you know even tasting an egg or a tomato right the quality of the yeah. food and small shots small tomatoes actually tasted like a tomato yeah, it was sweet and juicy and ripe and that wasn't just like one place but wherever we got our food from it's just the food is just the ingredients are delicious and you know you have smaller scale farming in some places that you can buy from from small farmers and you have the local boulangeries that have been around from which is a bakery been around for generations and the experience and the small scale food production is just the food is out of this world and in the beginning it was a challenge for us when it came to the husky squad to get them their food but once we found food for them the quality was out of this world too i mean belgium specifically yeah they were doing really good yeah i forgot the name of, of the of the i'll leave it here but there was one dog dog food store pet food store not your average pet food store that we literally drove hours just to get food for the squad because not just did they have really good quality food but the people there very knowledgeable about holistic health incredible so if mm. you live anywhere near near the belgium or Denons, even if you're in germany or if you're in netherlands and you're struggling with finding food for your dog and you just need more help besides our Cable to Rock course, which I'll leave right here too. Whole other story, but it will help you transition your dog to raw food. You're gonna need to find a place where to get that food. And that place in Belgium was probably one of our favorite shops we've ever been to. The people are just amazing. The patience, the positive energy, it's just, it's a really, really great place and amazing food quality options there. So that was a really, really nice experience there. So now that I think about it, I'm actually going, going to write a blog about this because I feel like there's so many resources mm -hmm. in this video that you may want to check out for yourself. So instead of leaving a bunch of different links, I'm going to leave a nice blog here where everything we talk about in this video will, will be accessible at your fingertips. And we'll list some of the food that we really like for the squad in, in Europe. And uh, for our Swiss friends, that's another bias by the way but we like her bias the coop right oh yeah <laughs> i don't know why it's just something very special about that place and what we really liked about the coop too is not just that they have really good food for us but we found small frozen sardines small anchovies for a fairly decent price for the squad and that was a staple for them in switzerland so for you guys in switzerland who want to feed your dog raw and you're taking a cable to raw course definitely keep that in mind about coop because their frozen fresh anchovies and sardines for dogs is absolutely amazing so what else we absolutely loved about europe is the magical christmas winter season it was so beautiful the first place we actually got to see it was in split in uh, split in uh, croatia so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment but then it followed up with uh, christmas season in annecy and that was in Annecy, France. That was absolutely incredible. It was so gorgeous there, so cozy. It's not, a, it's not one of the tourist destinations in France for, for Christmas, but it's more of a local tourism. So we got the magic from every side. I mean, it was so charming and we have a dedicated video to Christmas season in France. You guys have to check that out here on our channel. You're gonna wanna visit if you have the opportunity to do that. But. There's, it's it's not just that it's Christmas, it's how warm it feels and friendly. People are cheery. And it's cozy. And uh, so many lights everywhere. What's that called the drink we had. It's super popular. Hot, uh, hot uh, cider. Vinchon. I'm probably not saying it right. Cidre. I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had fondue, of course, and Kimari got to experience a night with us at the Christmas market because she needed her date. We like to do ice individual skating. dates. Oh yeah, well he ice skates. I, I uh, do something called falling on my butt almost 
every time. <laughs> butt skating. Butt skating. <laughs> That's terrible, but JC just throws on his skates and he doesn't really skate often and he just glides like he's done it his whole life. But it was so charming there and and that brings us to how friendly Europeans were to us throughout our trip, especially our new friends that we made on Instagram actually. Uh, Kathy, Damien and Talula, they're husky. They didn't bring their cat, which in a way is probably a good thing because the squad likes to kickbox <laughs> with cats. <laughs> but it was so nice that they drove from so far away to spend the New Year's with us and brought us uh, French delicacies like escargot and, and frog, frog legs. legs. <laughs> and we had the raclette with them too to bring in the New Year. It was so nice. I mean, we had our own experience in a really nice uh, restaurant in Annecy where we had raclette for the first time. Then when we were in Belgium, which is my home country, we spent time in the Ardennes and in the mountains. That's totally underrated. Belgium is very underrated. It's a very nice country. People are so friendly. And then we met our, our uh, Airbnb hosts, Andres and Sophie, and they took, they were sweet enough to try taking us with the squad to ride with their super sweet, big furry kid horses. <laughs> And this is in the south part of Belgium. It's Yardena. beautiful. Close to France. Mm -hmm. In Florenville. We were in Florenville. Florenville. I'll leave everything in the blog. But it was so nice because the squad's Achilles heel are definitely horses, right? Yeah, they just go crazy when you see horses. Yeah, Kimari screams. Never hear Kimari scream till she meets horses. And she definitely screams <laughs> when she meets them. So they were so patient. Uh, Sophie, Andres, and her family are so kind and took us for this long ride and allowed us to go through the training with the squad and probably about 45 minutes into it, we're all hiking together. Yeah. Two giant fur kid horses and three huskies. It looked really funny because to us the squad is big, but horses are way bigger and those were small horses. They were... What kind of horses? They were Highland from the Highlands. Oh yeah, Highlands. Was Scottish Highlands? No. Scottish horses. Oh, no. Scottish. Were they Scottish? Or this is just the assumption from Scottish Highlands? No, I think that's what they it were. Was. It was. It was absolutely incredible. And they're the sweetest, sweetest horses. And we had such a nice time. And the hospitality in Belgium was absolutely incredible. Even in Bulgaria, the hosts were so nice. Their family. So definitely felt welcome everywhere we went. Even though we had to adjust to new languages. Yeah, that was that was a tricky part. But it was really nice to be so welcomed everywhere in Europe and we're really grateful for anyone and all their hospitality that we experienced while we were there. So one of the things we noticed and absolutely loved about Europe, and this is, reminds me of my childhood too, is that the charming villages, most of them, the old towns, they are completely pedestrian zone. So you don't have to deal with traffic and smog and noise and all of that. You can just walk forever you can in have the little cobble, cobblestone streets, right? Yeah, you can have lunch or dinner and you don't hear the cars. You don't smell it, exactly. It's just, it's so pleasant. And I think it would be something, I and mean, me talking, but I think it would be something that can easily be replicated anywhere. So I don't know why we all... Yeah, but, you don't see that in the US Yeah, why much. do we have the cars parked up right by restaurants or these giant parking lots, you know? In Europe, people find places to park outside or they come together with their friends and then it's just this whole area that it's just all you hear is this chatter of kids and you know you just hear these nice little gentle noises and it just makes for a very a different mental experience I feel compared to being right in front of cars and traffic so that was that was really charming and split well there's a few there's a few places quite a few places that we left our hearts in in Europe and one of them is in split split was amazing that's Croatia Guys, Split is out of this world. Go off season. That's all I can say. It's a coast town. The right marina. The yeah, it's coastal yeah. marina. And especially when we were there in November, I think it was. The skies, I don't know if it's like this all year round, but the skies were pink and purple and every color during sunset. And the seas were a bit rougher. It felt like really real. There was actually some nice stormy days too. But we had a, a lot of really nice days too. But the food there, the restaurants and the little cobblestone fish. street, oh, the fish, yeah. And we loved, we loved walking around with the squad all over Split and we couldn't have done this in busy season during tourist season. 
there were still quite a few tourists even though it was off season in November but we loved walking with them everywhere Kimari loved the cats there she could not get enough of the cats but Split was absolutely magnificent and we got to see it a little bit during Christmas season but mostly before Christmas and it was gorgeous guys one honorable mention well there's so many but we definitely want to specify this one is a little castle mountaintop town in Croatia called Motobun yeah that place was amazing it was magical it was out of this world we were mind blown the way the history came together and the way it, the, the scenery from the, from the top of that little town it was just so incredible and we also spent time there with the squad having dinner right around sunset time it was such a gorgeous place walking with the squad there in the cobblestone streets it was so so pretty if you we stayed in Istra when we uh, when we went to visit Motovun but you can also actually go directly to Motovun because there's a lot of Airbnbs there if it was just JC and I and we were traveling to Europe I would probably spend there just to relax and enjoy the environment a good five days five to seven days what do you think right yeah. it's yep. such a pretty place and there's plenty of Airbnbs. You have to book them early, obviously, but it's such a gorgeous place. So you're gonna love it if you go there. Now, JC fell in love with a very special place that we originally didn't even plan on going, but we ended up going to. Plovdiv. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew he was gonna say that because. Plovdiv, Bulgaria. It was a very special place. It was unexpected for sure. And again, a really nice historical area that we didn't even think existed and it had this really nice fusion of European and Middle Eastern culture even the music the people you could so feel it and it's such warm people and for the first time in my life I always joke around that I'm a mutt because I have so much so much culture and background in me I don't even know exactly what I am but he was like hey there's another Victoria oh there's <laughs> another Victoria yeah there's so many people that look like her I do know I have Eastern European ancestry in me, quite a lot actually, but it was interesting that for the first time I felt that I looked like a lot of people, like I was part of people. Like you belong. Like I belong. <laughs> and my hair was really red too. And then there was a lot of girls that had their hair red too, you know, dyed red. It was just so funny. It was it was really cool to experience it and our hosts were there, it was so nice there too. And the culture was just absolutely mind blowing. What was it? It was named something European city of the year or something like that while you were there but definitely it, it does have the longest pedestrian walk or what do you, what do you call it yeah the longest pedestrian walk in in Europe I think that's that's actually surprising but it was just endless and they, 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 did, they did such a good job of preserving the history and then building some modernness with it but it just looks nice how it blends together yeah it was beautiful there ice cream do you like ice cream best ice cream in the world I think that we've ever had what would you say best or split better yeah, I think so best, huh? yeah I think it was the best ice cream there. best yeah. ice cream amazing coffee amazing food that was our staple while we were there terrible ice cream and coffee still got lose almost the every from day that. <laughs> still got some leftover from from that and from the French baguettes <laughs> too because we ate a lot of that stuff so another thing that we loved about Europe especially Switzerland, Switzerland stood out the most on that subject, is how everything just flows there. I think that society and humanity has been around there for so long and there's a lot of people there that they've really figured out over time how to make things flow and take away annoyances. You know, traffic flows well, right? Going to run errands is just so easy and things are organized in a way that it just feels more comfortable to take care of the everyday things in life you know and also very interesting and this is not something that was mandated by the government this is just an example this is in Switzerland people tend to anyone can correct, can correct me if I'm wrong on this one but people vote on subject and then it goes to the government to create the, the laws or the rules and one of the things that in Switzerland we've seen pretty much everywhere because I know it's a weird subject, but trash and recycling is not like in the US where you just come and get the trash and recycling from, you know, your house. There's community, large community recycling and trash bins. It's actually really cool. We really like that. And, and in a lot of European countries, it's the same way. But 
People don't recycle glass bottles, for example. It's not allowed by community demand to recycle glass bottles at night or on, on Sundays. Sundays. I think it, after a certain time also, like nine o'clock or so, you can't recycle yeah. glass bottles because when you throw it in these big community bins, it just makes a lot of noise and disturbs the community peace. I think we can, we can learn from that and adapt to those things and learn from each other. And that was one of the things that we definitely noticed about Switzerland is just these things that make life a lot more pleasant. And we really, really like that. Yeah, things just make sense. So to finish this part of the video, what we loved about Europe, and these are just like top of the head things. There are so many things that we love there. But if you want to see our experiences through the Husky Squad eyes, you definitely have to watch the video, the videos and the playlist here in the description of this video on our channel. And I'll have in the blog, lots of photos from our trip. And sadly, that's a whole other story, but our Instagram account, we had almost 85,000 of you in our community. Just got wiped out when we changed our phone number, but we'll talk about it in a little bit more. So we had tons of photos there, but thankfully I still have them. <laughs> and I'll share it here in this blog so you can go check them out too. But you definitely want to see what it was like from a dog's perspective and dog parent perspective. It was, it was an incredible experience. So definitely go check those things out. So for those of you guys who have been with us for a long time and who have reached out to us to check in with us, how we're doing. I know we haven't uploaded a video in a really long time and in a minute you'll know why. But thank you so much for all your messages and caring and thinking about us in, in this time. We are, we're all going through a difficult time right now. It's not just us, but we, we really appreciate that you think of us and you reach out to us to ask how we're doing we have not had the time to upload a video but we're here we're okay and we really really appreciate that you guys care so much about us and we care the same about you guys and we're actually wondering how things are for you where you are it's not it's not an easy an easy time to be in anywhere in the world i mean no it's not yeah we would love to know actually maybe share with us in the description of this video you know, where in the world are you and how is this whole situation panning out for you right now? I know there are similarities in, in most countries of what people are going through right now, but there's also a lot of differences, you know? Some countries are more open, some countries are locking down again. Like in the US, this, this mask mandate rolled out um, almost across the entire country. And, you know, there's, there's also unfortunately a lot of divide in humanity and, and um, a lot of a lot of uh, people are running based on emotion what's going on and fear and and different things and it's it's really a shame because we need to be able to come together more and listen to each other and understand that we're all going through the same thing right now but yeah we would love to know how how things are over there for you and how you're coping and um, before we get into to the, the reasons why we left Europe I just wanted to share with you guys that one of the, the best things that we do to cope with all of this, we're human too, as much as uh, we're strong and you know, we're, we always try to get past hurdles in life, but it's not easy. It's very, this is a very mental, mental experience. So the two things that really, really help us deal with the situation, we hope this helps you too, is one, we turned off mainstream media, period, right? Yeah. yeah, we don't watch the news. We haven't for a long time actually, since we've been together. <laughs> I feel that the mainstream media, and that goes back for years ago, is always, it's just always talking about bad news and always exaggerating things and always mm -hmm. making it seem that things are really terrible because, you know, news gets, gets clicks when things are scary and it would be really cool if, if they would publish good things too, good news too, because I think we all enjoy good news. Yeah. So for that reason, we've stopped watching mainstream media since we've been together, actually. We look at alternative sources uh, online and citizen reporting and dig into the research ourselves. But in general, we try not to, even though we like to be on top of what's going on, we try not to allow it to consume our life. You have to just put it down, even if you practice for just, you know, one day where you do a digital detox. Just do it. It's going to feel so good. The first time it's going to be very difficult because you're just going to want to oh, get back yeah. and see what's going on. But, you know, it, it really impacts your well-being. You don't even realize how badly it impacts you till you turn it off. But once you do it a couple of times, it gets easier and easier and you stop getting headaches and you start feeling better. And 
you know, your mood improves and, you know, talk to your friends in real life and try to connect with people in person, pick up a phone. You know, texting is good, but sometimes having a conversation. So definitely try to do a digital detox and connect more with people in real life. It's really helped us. Because yeah, it seems like we're starting to lose that, right? That yeah, that connection. Connection, that in-person connection is just starting to go away. Yeah, that's, that's not, not a good. good thing. No, especially with this mask situation. I find that so many people are scared to even look at each other anymore. This is, this is not how we are as human beings. We're social creatures. We need to connect. We need to be together and united. And we need to try to just really take a deep breath and not communicate with emotion. Communicate with logic. If you can't do that yet, take a deep breath and try to first connect within you. And how do you connect within you? Here. This is how you do it. It's amazing what the outdoors does for you. And it's not even, it's not even rocket science. This is where we belong. This is who we are. We are nature. So being in nature is the best therapy, nature therapy, that you can get, right? And it's a big part of staying healthy too. Exactly. I mean, when a lot of the chaos um, was going on when we were in Portland, actually, and that was one of the most difficult things is that the trails were closed. We couldn't go to the trails and that really wore us down mentally. And when we escaped Portland, we went, we just disconnected from the world, literally. And we just went this first camping where it was legal and it was fine. We checked with the park ranger, but um, we needed to really reconnect with ourselves. This is ourselves. And this is what we did. And I can tell you after being this first camping, it felt so good. So my point is, if you can try to do that, that's like the best thing, even whether you have a dog or don't have a dog. If you have a dog, you must, <laughs> there's no doubt. Find what, whatever place you can to go and can reconnect back within yourself. This is how we stay sane. And that's the reason why we, we didn't post the video for so long because after coming back to the US and going to Portland, we just wanted to escape, escape everything, everything that was going on. We went to nature. Mm -hmm. as we much stayed as we there could. for for weeks and uh yeah we didn't we we took baths in the river <laughs> we we uh ate as primitive as possible and we just we really took a good detox from everything and it, i find it so important to do to be able to maintain sanity in our in our current environment trust me you guys if you do this you're gonna feel so much better if you have been doing this let others know here in the comments that this is a good thing to do to feel better. And this doesn't just go with what's going on today in our current our current so sociological climate. Is that the right word? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's in general. This is how we've lived for a long time. And this is nothing new to us. The only thing that's really new to us is that a lot of trails and the outdoors were closed. That was very, very challenging. But this is where we find peace. And this is where things really come together in the mind and you feel so much better every day so we would love to know where you're at maybe we can have more of a discussion on this but just wanted to give you guys your gratitude and, and encouragement at the same time don't let this get to you negativity problems life is like this up and down this is just a big down but it can't go down forever it's it's gonna get better again a lot of it is stuff that it's up to us that we can do individually but generally good passes bad passes ups and downs that's just how life is and this too shall pass we'll all get past this together so now on to the reasons why we had to leave europe as you guys know from the beginning of the video that the reason why we went to europe we wanted to see if europe was going to be home i grew up there in belgium throughout my throughout my youth and i've traveled there a lot and we've lived here for a long time in the u.s so we wanted to see if europe and the ops are home and that's the reason why we took a very long trip that was going to be either indefinitely or at least for a very long time it wasn't just a little trip that we took but as soon as the pandemic hit it just it changed everything and we knew fairly quickly that this is going to be more of a global situation my intuition told me that and then we're going to be stuck in, in, a, in a place where we can't legally be full-time yet. We have visa things to deal with, with three pups and I knew that Airbnb is going to become a challenge and we've been doing Airbnb for such a long time. So we knew that this is going to be difficult and 
you know, when you have, we don't speak the language locally, we already had reservations in the UK that we lost yeah, because we were of gonna, this. We are going to travel to Scotland, UK, Scandinavia, Norway. I mean, we, we didn't want to leave Europe for a long time. Are we going to go back to Switzerland because that was our favorite place? <laughs> favorite place to go hiking with the, with the squad. Yeah, and the Mont Blanc region too. Yeah, so we, we had all these plans. Yeah. So many plans. It was going to be at least another couple of years before we leave Europe. But as soon as that happened, you know, my intuition told me that we need to leave even though we didn't want to. So we, we had to make that decision. And it was a very expensive decision to deal with this whole situation. But hindsight, we, we feel like this was a really, a really good idea to do. Um, not because it would be worse for us to be in Europe during this situation. Maybe it would have been better. But it's more about you know this whole thing where you can be where you can live legally and the only place right now where we can both live legally at the moment is in the US. US. So we felt like we really needed to be in the place where we can be at home. But plus to be honest, um this is just a quick side note, we really got to appreciate uh while we were there some amazing things about the US, but that's another a whole other subject that we're gonna get into a different time or possibly if we decide to open a channel, JCMV channel. If you guys want that, let us know because it's not really related to the squad. So we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, dishonor the squad by putting that kind of content here. This is the channel is all about them. We're just their accessories, I always say. But yeah, we felt like it was the right place to be. It's here, so we made that decision. There's another reason why we left Europe. Um, it won't be part of these three reasons because this was a very personal reason. And the reason why I mention it to you guys is because as much as we really love sharing our life, this is kind of like our diary that became a community. Um, and we love sharing everything with you. There's always going to be certain things. And I recommend this to everyone that is more in the public eye to keep things private. You have to. There's certain things that stays between you or you and your partner or, or just you in your own head and that's it. And um, there was a very personal reason during that same time that came up and we felt that it was the right thing to do leaving at that moment because of that. But that's not part of the three reasons. So the second reason why we decided to leave Europe at the time, and why we, this is not why we had to, but why we felt it was a good idea because reason number one was happening is because when we left the US, kind of was like bittersweet because we really love the outdoors here and the wilderness here and JC really wanted to explore the Canadian Rockies and Alaska and so many other parts of the great outdoors here yeah, in I want the to US. drive to Alaska. We should do it, right? I think so. <laughs> I think we should still do it. But we never got to do that. And when we left the US, it was kind of like this like this ouch. Like we really still want to see that. Even if we move to Europe, we still want to see that someday. So we felt like this is a good reason when we start combining reason number two and the private reason and the first reason why we should do that. And now we feel like we're good, we're having the opportunity to do that here. Well, we'll see. Depending on how depending how things go in in our in our current climate, right? So the third reason and final reason, top of my head, why we decided why we had to leave Europe, this is why we had to leave Europe actually, is because when we went there, one of the things that we did is I tried to regain my Belgian residency. I was a Belgian resident, not a citizen, as a child. And I tried to regain that and then work our way from there to be able to move to Europe. That didn't happen. Nope. But, you know, we, we learned while we were there, at the time, things changed. Things have probably changed by now, too, because of this whole global situation. But at the time when we were there, we learned that if you want to get any kind of citizenship or regain my residency, the best place to do it from is from your own home country, which for us is the U.S. Ooh, a snake, a garden snake. We figured because of everything that was going on, it's just all the things combined together, we figured that we had to leave Europe, that it was time. So that's what we did. And um, it is bittersweet because we really wanted to spend there much longer than we did. And there's so many things we wanted to see, especially the great outdoors. We were shooting for at least five years. But, yeah, but, uh, five years were indefinitely. Yeah. But it's okay. We'll see how everything pans out. So I know that so many of you guys are going to ask one of the biggest questions we've been getting for over a year now. How did you travel with the Husky Squad to Europe internationally and back? 
and I understand that this is this is something everyone would want to know. I can tell you one thing. If this wasn't something we were planning to do on a very long term or indefinitely, we wouldn't have taken the trip with the squad because it's this was the probably one of the hardest things to achieve in our life. Yeah. But I'm happy to let you know, even though the subject is quite intense, that I decided that we'll do a video on the subject. So that will be our next video on this channel. I haven't filmed it yet. But um, if you guys want to drop questions here, we already got quite a few. But I'm going to try to answer as many of you guys as possible in that video. Let us know what you want to know about this. I mean, you're going to have to do a ton of your own research, especially given the things that are going on right now and travel has completely changed in general. But we'll do our best to, uh, to guide you and not tell you what to do, but guide you in that video, not only how to potentially do this, but to really analyze to see if it's something that you really want to do. So definitely stay tuned to that video. Let us know in this in this com in the comment section here what you want to know. That will be the next video on our channel. Before I go, before we finish this video, I want to tell you guys really quickly about this Instagram situation where we had a community of 85,000 of you together. So many direct messages where we're it's really hard. I mean, we were helping so many people, so many dog parents, things that it's not even public and all those things just disappeared. We've even gotten messages from people, from you guys saying that, thinking that we blocked you on Instagram. No, our account just simply went poof. When we tried to update our phone number, now that we're back in the US and we changed our phone number, it just locked us out and it's like our account doesn't exist. You Google Instagram Husky Squad and our link is broken. It's just it's gone. Like it got deleted or something. Yeah, it's been three days. Maybe by the time we upload this video, we'll have our channel back. But this brings me to the subject that you really, we can't rely to be in touch with you guys and you be in touch with us through these social media platforms because you don't have control over these things. You really don't. So we really want to be in touch with you guys. We're going to do a lot more communi communication type of stuff with you guys in the future. We're thinking of ways to do that. But for now, the best bet for you guys is go to huskysquad.com, subscribe to our newsletter. We have a total of 100 and we had a total of 120,000 in the social community, but only 2,000 of you are part of our newsletter community. And we need to change that because we really want to stay in touch with you guys. So definitely go there, subscribe to our newsletter so we can be in touch with you. Everyone that subscribed to our newsletter has received exclusive videos that are not public while we were traveling in Europe and we feel that's more of like a community space so we want to share those things with you and we're going to think of ways and if you have any other ideas how we can be in touch with you more closely and that we don't lose touch definitely subscribe to our channel and definitely suggest here what you feel we could do or you can send us a message um, through our website what we can do to be more in touch with you we don't want this to happen we did create a backup account on Husky Squad just yesterday and there's 200 of you that found us again, but we definitely want to rally all of us to uh, get back there together. So that's Husky Squad Family on Instagram now. That's going to be our backup account in case anything happens. So thank you guys for watching this video and we'll see you next time here on Husky Squad with how to travel with your dog internationally. We love you guys, stay strong. Don't let this get you down. Don't give up on anything this too shall pass. We love you guys. See you Thanks, next time. Thanks guys. Bye.